In the previous lecture, when we spoke about electric fields, we said that one advantage of electric field was that once you know the electric field at a point, you do not need to think about the cause of that electric field anymore and you can just focus on what effect it will have on other charges. And one very practical application of that is when you have a complex line charge, uh, sorry, when you have a complex system of charge, then what you can do is you can find out the electric field due to this charge distribution and once you find that out you can forget about the charge distribution and you can then just focus on studying the effect of that electric field on various charges placed at that point and let us illustrate that say for example i have a rod a very thin rod of length l and it has a charge of q coulomb distributed uniformly on it such that we have lambda coulombs per meter and this is called as linear charge density when you have some coulombs per meter that is called as linear charge density and so i have a rod with lambda coulombs per meter linear charge density that means that if i multiply my lambda times l i get my total charge q so let us see how to find out the electric field of this rod at point p and to do that first i'll take my axis such that my y axis passes through point p and the x axis is along the rod so this is my x axis and this is my y axis now Secondly, I know that electric field of a point charge can be given as K Q over R square where Q is the charge and R is the distance from the charge. Now when I have a rod of charge, I can break down this rod into small elements and imagine that the rod is made up of many many small elements and if I make each element infinitesimally small let me call my element width as dx as dx approaches zero then let me say that there is a charge dq on this charge element let me color it then dq i can say approaches a point charge and this is a fair enough approximation so what i can write is that say i pick up my element dx such as it is at distance x from the y-axis or x from p then I can say that the electric field that this element of charge exerts on point p can be given by k dq over r squared oh, where I, r squared is my x squared because x is the distance and this is the electric field now I know that the distribution is lambda coulombs per meter and so I can write dq as lambda times the width or the length and that is dx over x squared and this is the electric field due to the small element I have selected at p and its direction since this is a positive charge the electric field will act away from the charge and this is the direction of dE. So, as I go along the rod and keep breaking it down into many, many, many such small elements, each of them is going to cause an electric field at P and the direction of electric field due to each of this element is along the negative y axis. And so, I can find out my resultant electric field as integral of electric field due to each element. Now since, let me write it like this, now since the direction of dEs is the same, I can express my integral as just as the integral of magnitude and so I'll write this as dE by removing the vector notation because I have established the direction. And so that is equal to k lambda dx over x squared and the limits goes from a to a plus l because I want to cover my full rod and now on it is just an integration problem so my k 
and lambda are constants. When I take the integral, I get this as minus 1 over x. The limits are a to l plus a. And so I can get my electric field due to a line of charge at a distance a from it is equal to k q over a into l plus a. This is my answer. And it acts along negative y-axis. That is my direction. Now, once I have established the electric field at point P, then I can find out the force it exerts on any charge, say QP, placed at point P as QP times E and that equals k q q p over a into l plus a and now you see the advantage of the concept of electric field is that once i establish the electric field with a very complex charge distribution every time i need to calculate the force it exerts on a charge i do not need to do this calculation again this calculation has already been established